All right, the last section of our uh, memory data and addressing portion is uh, going to cover a little bit about Boolean algebra, the kinds of things we need to know, the kinds of operators we need to know about uh, to do some bit level manipulations on these bits we're storing in memory. Uh, let's uh, go through the basics of Boolean algebra really quickly. Uh, the Boolean algebra was developed by George Boole, that's who it was named after, in the 19th century. And uh, basically it's an algebraic representation of logic. We encode uh, true as a 1 and false as a 0, uh, again binary number system. And uh, we have a few basic operators. A uh, very important one is the logical AND, uh, often represented with an ampersand as an operator. Uh, that says uh, if uh, the variable A and the variable B are true, then uh, the AND, the product of their uh, values in Boolean algebra is also true. Okay, so A and B is 1 when both A is 1 and B is 1. Uh, similarly, we have the OR operator, which uh, as you'd expect is true if A is 1 or B is 1 or both. And then, of course, we have the exclusive OR operator, often abbreviated as XOR, uh, which is true if A is true or B is true, but not both. So it excludes that case. That's where that X comes from. And then finally, we have a urinary operator in uh, Boolean algebra that says the not of A or the complement of A is, uh, is just the opposite value. So if A is 1, then its complement is 0. And vice versa, if A is 0, then its complement is 1. Uh, interesting uh, law in Boolean algebra uh, that can be derived from basic principles is uh, De Morgan's law, which uh, basically says the complement of the OR of two variables is the same as the AND of the complemented variables. And this can be very valuable when we want to eliminate ORs to have only ANDs or uh, eliminate ANDs to have only ORs in uh, in a logic expression. Here are another representation of these basic operators in what are called truth tables. Here we see the operator, in this case the AND, and the, va the possible values of one variable and the possible values of another variable. And this is the AND of the two. So when they're both zero, then the AND is zero. When they're both one, the AND is one. And when either one of them is a, a zero, then the result is also zero. So in the case of AND, it is one only when both are true or one. For the OR, which we use the vertical bar, uh, you'll see that it's a one whenever either one of them is a one and only zero when both are zero. For the exclusive OR, again, if one is a one, but not both. So in this case, we want to make sure that this is a zero as well. That's the difference to the OR case that we had here. And then the unary operator, of course, there's only one variable, uh, and it's just the opposite of the, of the value. So that's the basics of Boolean algebra. How we use this to manipulate bits? Well, we can have uh, two uh, bytes in memory. Here we're showing two bytes, and we can AND them together bitwise, one bit at a time. So we can AND 0 and 0, and of course that result would be a 0. 1 and 1, the result would be a 1. In these two, the next cases, these are all 0, the result, except for the last one, where again the two values are 1, so we would expect the 1 as a result. Okay, So this would be the resulting AND across these two uh, variables. For the OR case, the same values again, as long as one of them is a 1, we'd expect to see a 1 down here. So there's only two cases where we would end up with a 0, uh, here and here, where both variable values are 0. Uh, finally, for the exclusive OR, uh, where would we expect to see zeros? Well, certainly here, where they're both 0. Uh, certainly here, where they're both zeros, but also where they're both 1. And that's here at the end and also right here in the second column. So that result uh, is the corresponding one for XOR. And then for the bitwise uh, complement or not, uh, we would just expect to see the bits flip. Okay? So this is the, uh, the Boolean operators applied to 
bit vectors, in this case just the bytes length of bits. Uh, and in C we have these exact same operators available to us and they can apply to any integral data type, uh, long, int, short, or character. Uh, remember character being just a byte. Uh, and uh, the arguments to these operators up here are treated as bit vectors and the operations apply bitwise. So you can see here we've declared three byte uh, variables, uh, A, B, and C. Uh, you'll notice here that we're setting the value of A to the hex 41. That's represented here in its bit notation. And when we take the complement of A uh, and assign it to B, this is the value we get and assign it to B. In hex, uh, this is BE. Not immediately obvious uh, from the 41. Okay, but you can see that the 1 and E add up to 16 and the 4 and B add up to 16. All right, uh, if we take the value of 0 and put it in A, as in this case, then the complement is just FF, all ones. Here's a case of an AND. Uh, we've taken 69 and 55 as bit vectors, uh, represented here in, uh, in these values. This should say 69, not 41. And, uh, Sorry about that error there. This is a 6 and 9. And uh, the bit vector is correct, however. And A and B is just uh, this st string of, of ones and zeros. Again, similar to the example on the previous page, which uh, results in a 41. Okay. So this is how we do bit level operations in, uh, in C. Uh, just using those basic operators. Okay, so um, the other thing we should know is that a zero is always viewed as false and anything that is non-zero is true. So the value doesn't have to be one to be true. Anything that is not a zero is interpreted as true. Now when we're talking about bits, of course, those the only values we can have are zero or one, but if we apply a logical operator to an entire series of bits, for example, an entire byte at a time or an entire int at a time, then it will only be considered false if that entire int is equal to zero. In other words, all the bits are zero. And anything else, as long as there's any one anywhere, then it will be considered as true. All right? This is very useful uh, for early termination of if statements, and uh, we'll see that a little bit later on. Uh, but let's take a look at a few examples. Uh, here's the complement. Again, this is now the logical operator, not the bitwise complement. So we're using a different symbol, the exclamation point or bang rather than the tilde. And so the complement of 41 is uh, what we'd expect from uh, our logic is to be zero, false. You notice it's not the bitwise complement. That was a different value. Uh, in this case, it's simply zero. If we take the complement of zero, what would we expect to get? Well, actually, anything would do uh, that has at least a one one in it that would be true. Uh, but by convention, we'll just flip one bit and make it uh, equivalent to a hex zero one. All right, if we and 69 and 55, as we did on the previous page, we know this result would have been 41 if we had done a uh, bitwise operation. But in this case, this value is interpreted as true. This value is interpreted as true. So our result is simply true, or 1. Uh, if we then do 0 and with 55, a 0 is false. So our result should be false, as it is. Uh, again, let's do an, uh, an OR operation. And we would see 69 true, or 55 also true, is just going to result in a 1. Okay, so how does this uh, early termination help? Well, for example, suppose that we're looking to uh, increment the value uh, at which P points. P is a pointer uh, to a particular value. And what we're concerned about is that we actually do have a pointer and that our pointer isn't null or all zeros. So we can first say, well, is P true, meaning not zero? Um, so by 
putting it into an, a logical AND statement, we can do that test. Here, if P is all zeros, a null pointer, we know that the AND is going to be false in the end, so we can just not do that, uh, not continue evaluating this expression. And it would stop right there. On the other hand, if P is something else other than zero, then we can assume that it's not null, and it's probably a valid address, and we can dereference it, go to the place it points, get the value, and increment it. Okay? So uh, this is a shorthand notation for if P is true, then increment the value at that pointer. All right? But often in C, you'll see this as a quick shorthand instead of having to write that if. And this can be placed in the middle of an expression even uh, to help uh, check that pointer. All right. Lastly, I want to show you how Boolean algebra can be used to uh, represent sets. We'll be using this a few places uh, during uh, the rest of the course. So we can take a bit vector of W bits. Uh, let's say maybe that's uh, just 8 bits for now. Uh, so uh, what we can do is have each bit represent an element of a set. In this case, the set can have up to 8 elements. And you'll notice in this example here, uh, I have this particular vector. And I can have each bit represent one element of the set. So this bit sequence would represent the set of element 0, element 3, 5, and 6. Because those are the ones I've set to 1. Okay? Here's another example, slightly different set, 0, 2, 4, 6. Okay. So you kind of get the hang of how we could represent a set using a bit vector. And now our operators, our bitwise operators, are pretty interesting. The AND can be viewed as set intersection because it will only be true if the element is in both sets. So if we AND these two bit vectors together, we would get this result, which says that 0 and 6 are elements of the intersection. Okay. Similarly, OR corresponds to set union. If we OR those two values, we would get this bit vector, which represents 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You notice that is the union of these two sets, all the elements present. Exclusive OR corresponds to what's called the symmetric difference. In other words, elements that are in one set but not both. In this case, the elements 2, 3, 4, and 5. And a complement is obviously the complementary set. So the complement of the first one of the uh, second set here is 1, 3, 5, and 7. All right? 